I find it a little difficult to say what the subject matter of this seminar is going to be because it's too fundamental to give it a title. I'm going to talk about what there is. Now, the first thing, though, uh, that we have to do is to get our perspectives with some background about the basic ideas which influence our everyday common sense, our fundamental notions about what life is about, ideas of the world which are built into the very nature of the language we use and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image in terms of which we try to make sense of the world.
whatever it is, you're okay, but there are all those people over in Asia, and Africa, and they may not really be people. When you want to destroy someone, you always define them as unpeople.
you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. And when then we cut ourselves off and don't feel that we are still the Big Bang. But you are. Depends how you define yourself. the Big Bang, the original force of the universe coming on as whoever you are. See, when I meet you, I see not just what you define yourself as, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. I see every one of you as the primordial energy of the universe coming on at me in this particular way. I know I'm that too. But we've learned to define ourselves as separate from it.
what I would call a kind of a basic problem we've got to go through first is to understand that there are no such things as things that is to say separate things that that is only a way of talking and if you can understand this you're going to have no further problems I once asked a group of high school children what do you mean by a thing and first of all they gave me all sorts of synonyms they said it's an object which is simply another word for a thing it doesn't tell you anything about what you mean by a thing finally a very smart girl who was in the group said a thing is a noun and she was quite right a noun isn't a part of nature it's part of speech there are no nouns in the physical world there are no separate things in the physical world either see the physical world is wiggly the clouds mountains trees people are all wiggly and uh, only when human beings get working at things they build buildings in straight lines and try and make out that the world isn't really wiggly but here are we sitting in this room all built on straight lines but each one of us is as wiggly as all get out Now then, when you uh, want to get control of something that wiggles, it's pretty difficult, isn't it? You try and pick up a fish in your hands and the fish is wiggly and it slips out. What do you do to get hold of a fish? You use a net. 
And so the, the net is the basic thing we have for getting hold of the wiggly world. A net is something regular. And I can number the holes in a net. So many so holes up, so many holes across. And if I can number these holes, I can count exactly where each wiggle is in terms of a hole in that net. But in order to do that, I've got to break up the wiggle into bits. And I've got to call this a specific bit, and this the next bit of the wiggle, and this the next bit, and this the next bit of the wiggle. And so these bits are things which I mark out in order to talk about the wiggle, in order to measure it, and therefore in order to control it. But in nature, in fact, in the physical world, the wiggle isn't bitted. So the world doesn't come thing. You and I are all as much continuous with the physical universe as a wave is continuous with the ocean. The ocean waves and the universe peoples. And as the wave, I wave at you and say, you, the world is waving at me with you and saying, uh, hi, I'm here. But the way we feel and sense our existence, being based on a myth that we are made, that we are parts, that we are things, our consciousness has been influenced so that each one of us does not feel that. We feel we have been hypnotized, literally hypnotized by social convention into feeling and sensing that we exist only inside our skins, that we are not the original bang but just something out on the end of it. And therefore, we are scared stiff. Because my wave is going to disappear. And I'm going to die. And that would be awful.
You are a fluke. You are a separate event. And you run from the maternity ward to the crematorium and that's it, baby. Now, why does anybody think that way? There's no reason to because it isn't even scientific. It's just a myth. And it's invented by people who wanted to feel a certain way. They want to play a certain game. Camus said there is only really one serious philosophical question, which is whether or not to commit suicide. Should you or not commit suicide? This is a good question. Why go on? And you only go on if the game is worth the candle. Now, the universe has been going on for an incredible long time. And so, really, uh, a, a satisfactory theory of the universe has to be one that's worth betting on. That's a very, it seems to me, absolutely elementary common sense. If you make a theory of the universe which isn't worth betting on, why bother? Just commit suicide. But if you want to go on playing the game, you've got to have an optimal theory for playing the game. If 
there is any such thing at all as intelligence and love and beauty well you found it in other people in other words it exists in us as human beings and as i said if it is there in us it is symptomatic of the scheme of things we are as symptomatic of the scheme of things as the apples are symptomatic of the apple tree or the rose of the rose bush the earth is not a big rock infested with living organisms any more than your skeleton is bones infested with cells the earth is geological yes but this geological entity grows people and our existence on the earth is a symptom of the solar system and its balances as much as the solar system in turn is a symptom of our galaxy and our galaxy in its turn is a symptom of the whole company of galaxies goodness only knows what that's in
when as a scientist you describe the behavior of a living organism you try to say what a person does it's the only way in which you can describe what a person is describe what they do then you find out that in making this description you cannot confine yourself to what happens inside the skin in other words you can't talk about a person walking unless you start describing the floor because when I walk I don't just dangle my legs in empty space I move in relationship to a room and so in order to describe what I'm doing when I'm walking I have to describe the room I have to describe the territory so in, in, in de describing my talking at the moment I can't describe this just as a thing in itself because I'm talking to you and so what I'm doing at the moment is not completely described unless your being here is described also so if that is necessary, if in other words, in order to describe my behavior, I have to describe your behavior and the behavior of the environment, it means that we've really got one system of behavior. That what I am involves what you are. I don't know who I am unless I know who you are. And you don't know who you are unless you know who I am. In other words, we are not separate. We define each other. We're all backs and fronts to each other. We and our environment and all of us and each other are interdependent systems. We know who we are in terms of other people. We all lock together. And this is again and again the serious scientific description of how things happen. And any good scientist knows that what you call the external world is as much you as your own body.
Dios que
wonder if it's ever struck you how curious a thing it is that most of the things that we experience we regard as things that happen to us which we ourselves do not originate which are events expressing some sort of power or activity that is external to ourselves and if you consider that you realize that what you mean by yourself is rather narrowly circumscribed even events that go on in our own bodies are put in the category of things that happen to us in the same way as things that go on in the world outside our skins if there's a thunderstorm or an earthquake well it happens to you you're not responsible for it but so in the same way when you have hiccups you didn't plan on it if you have belly rumbles you had no intention of doing it and as to the catastrophic act of getting born well you had nothing do with that and you can spend all your life blaming your parents for putting you in the situation in which you find yourself and this uh, way of looking at the world in this sort of passive mood as something that happens to you goes right down to our general feeling about life it goes down to the way in which we have been accustomed to look at human existence as a precarious event in the cosmos that uh, on the whole is depicted as being completely unsympathetic and alien and to our existence
if you are reared with a 20th century, or shall we say an early 20th century common sense, which is based on the philosophy of science of the 19th century. Uh, you regard yourself as an accident, a biological accident, in a stupid universe, which is mechanical, but has no feelings. A vast, pointless gyration of radioactive rocks and gas in which uh, you happen to occur. Of course, if you don't have that point of view and you are more traditional, you look upon yourself as a child of God. And therefore, under authority. In other words, there's a big boss on top of all this. And uh, you better watch your P's and Q's because that Almighty is looking after you with the attitude of this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And when you look at the world in that image, or in the other image, that it's a stupid mechanism, either point of view you take, uh, you don't really belong. You are not really part of all this. Uh, or to put it in the strongest possible way, it is quite alien to our thought that the external world, which is defined as something that happens to you, and your body itself as something that you got caught up with, it is quite alien to consider all that as you yourself. Because, you see, we have such a myopic view of what oneself is.